There's something about farming games I've never really clicked with. I tried Harvest Moon Back to Nature and got bored after a few seasons. I barely started Stardew Valley before I gave up. And I've never even attempted to play others in the genre like Rune Factory. But Sakuna of Rice and Ruin intrigued me. It had farming, sure, but there were also 2D action segments that looked fluid, chaotic, and fun. Splitting a game's genre can often lead to neither halves working, but when it does come together, I'm almost certain to fall in love. So, do all of Sakuna's elements work in harmony, or is this another farm game for me to skip? Sakuna tells the story of, well, Sakuna, a spoiled goddess who finds her posh life turned upside down when five humans stumble into the godly realm. She attempts to send them away, but in a comedy of errors ends up destroying the tribute meant for the leader of the realm, Lady Kamuhitsuki. As punishment, she's banished to an island of demons that her parents once liberated. The demons have returned on Moss, and she cannot return until she discovers the reason why. But in the meantime, she must survive the elements along with the humans by occupying her mother's old farm. There, she must protect these strangers, learn to grow and tend rice, and take control of the island from the demons while learning their secrets. It's a solid setup, and Sakuna handles it extremely well, mainly because it knows what to focus on. This is a character piece through and through. Obviously, Sakuna has to learn how to be less selfish and more hardworking, but the humans are just as engaging, if not more so. Taomon comes from a samurai family but has no talent for the blade or really anything. He knows what it takes to farm rice, but just can't do it himself, hence why he resorted to becoming a bandit despite his jovial nature. Mirte is a foreign missionary who was captured and meant to be sold into slavery before being saved by Talamon. Kinta is a young hothead who loves the mouth off, but has budding talent as a blacksmith. Yui has a crush on Kinta and excels at the loom, though she has a temper and may be hiding her own secrets. And finally, there's Kaimaru, a toddler who's good with animals and was the son of Talamon's previous bandit leader. None of this is set up front. You're treated to their personalities with little context, but as you sit down to dinner, conversation starts to flow. Everyone becomes interested in each other's past, and extra scenes play out around the farm that show more of how these characters relate to each other. It feels natural, and every time one appeared, it was almost like a treat. The overarching story is well told, but personally, the characters are what kept me invested throughout the farming and combat. That's not to say either of those elements are dull. In fact, I think both are the draw and core strength of Sakuna, mainly in how they interconnect and complement one another. But let's focus on the farming for now because it's unlike any other game in the genre I've played before. I was completely caught off guard when I was thrown into planting rice for the first time. There was little instruction and, unlike most farming games I've played, there was no grid-based system. I could place the rice shoots wherever I wanted. I tried my best, but absolutely felt I was missing something. And the same could be said of all aspects of growing rice. I had no idea how much water it needed. I could only guess when I should start cutting the rice or how much should be hauled to make it white versus brown. It also didn't help that every aspect felt like it took so long. You had to put in the work if you wanted a good return. And yet, right from the beginning, the system clicked with me. I wasn't put off due to this trial by fire at all, and in fact found it freeing compared to farming games before. Sure, my first harvest was terrible and there wasn't much to survive on through the winter, but by next season, my abilities had leveled up. Suddenly, I could see a grid to guide how far apart the rice should be planted. I could perform the tasks faster and do more at once. It truly felt like I was learning as Sakuna herself did. And every planting season, I was discovering something new and performing better at what had come before. Seasons come quickly as Sakuna features a day-night cycle, but each day in game is actually a month of time, making for three months for each season. Spring focuses on planting, summer on proper water management, and autumn on cutting, drying, and preparing the rice. Winter doesn't allow for much until the final month, when the field has to be tilled for the next season. It's certainly repetitious, but not necessarily in a bad way. Sure, I'm doing the same thing each year, but oftentimes new tools are introduced to make things faster, and Sakuna herself learns new skills. But ultimately, it's worthwhile because this is how Sakuna grows stronger. She doesn't earn levels through combat, but from the status of her rice. Every aspect of the rice is related to some part of her stats, whether it's HP, strength, defense, luck, and so on. So you never have to grind for levels, you just have to make sure that your rice is set for a good harvest. 
The game also offers tips as you play, detailing how the rice should be handled in order to increase the yield, the quality, and avoid pest. This is also where fertilizer comes into play, as mixing in certain items will grant bonuses to those stats as well. And I adore when games can pull off this kind of gameplay loop where everything you do ties into some other aspect, creating constant feedback and a drive to just keep playing. It also helps that combat is a lot of fun, but filled with depth that I was continually discovering as I played. Sakuna has light and heavy attacks that can chain together, but directional inputs change the nature of those attacks, allowing Sakuna to dash ahead for a single hit or potentially launch enemies into the air. The attacks have a great sense of impact to them, making it satisfying to land each hit and even juggle the demon before slamming it back into the ground. But that's only the basics. Sakuna has abilities that she can attach to each direction that can really lay on the hurt. These can come in the form of a massive swing to knock enemies into each other, a series of cuts that can chew through defenses, and a myriad of others that become available as the rice harvest grows in quality. There is a meter that limits how often these abilities can be used, but it refills quickly enough that it's essentially only there to make sure you're never over-reliant on the abilities. Sakuna can also block attacks by dashing toward enemy strikes, throwing them off balance for a short time, and even better, toss demons into each other to rack up massive damage. It was immensely satisfying every time I landed a hit that crashed demons into one another. Sakuna also has access to her mother's raiment, which serves as one of her most valuable tools. It not only allows her to attach to walls and reach higher areas, but serves as her dodge. She can attach the raiment to any enemy and quickly swing to the other side, avoiding attacks or getting behind enemy defenses. It took me a while to realize the full potential of the raiment, but during some later boss fights, it was an invaluable tool to stay alive and dodge massive attacks. But the raiment has its own abilities that can be used like flipping an enemy to make them vulnerable, setting up a powerful slam that sends them flying, or even lowering their attack and defense. Once I had combat down, each encounter felt impressive as demons piled in and I cut a path through them. And there's even more to it as each weapon is considered a strike, a slash, or a pierce type, with each one being effective or ineffective against certain types of enemies. Switching to the appropriate type can make a big difference. But every weapon and piece of equipment also has slots for spirit bows, which can affect Sakuna's effectiveness at certain things. One piece of clothing might provide better HP boosts in the winter, while another increases the amount of meat dropped by enemies. There are other bows that can be equipped to any open slot as well that provide HP, strength, and other bonuses that really help in a tough fight. Sakuna can be surprisingly tough at times, and I died a lot throughout my playthrough. It never felt unfair as the time of day would reset and I was sent to the beginning of an area to try again. But any items you obtained do have to be recollected, making some deaths feel especially devastating. It felt like the game consistently tested my skills in combat, at times pushing me to learn the patterns of every enemy I encountered. Still, there were times where I reached a wall that I couldn't hope to overcome without the next rice harvest. But even when that was the case, I still had plenty of other activities to do. Each level not only hosted a mix of demons, but unique gathering materials, all of which had a specific use. Food is brought to Murte, who cooks for dinner, granting a multitude of bonuses for the next day. Eventually, I could make Kinta a blacksmith shop, where he would then use the ore to craft new weapons. And the same applied to Yui, as she could create new clothes to help in both battle and farming. Each level also has multiple objectives that add toward the exploration total. The more that's earned, the more locations are opened up, which means more materials to craft and eat new things. Taimaru would even bring in dogs so that the humans could go out and gather these materials from safe spots. And eventually, rice could be traded with the godly realm for brand new supplies and rare items. Every element feels necessary to the others, and I found the seasons flying by as I explored new areas, got better at growing rice, and defeated hordes of demons. The only issue I ever found myself having was that the enemy variety wasn't that great. I was constantly fighting rabbits, boars, clams, fish, sparrows, and the occasional deer, pheasants, and bears. The placements and mixtures did their best to keep each encounter interesting, but it would have been nice to have a little more variety. Visually, Sakuna looks fantastic on the Switch. Everything runs smoothly and the style makes it stand out despite limited animations and cutscenes. It's all about big personalities which are captured beautifully. Every character design and monster feels distinct and instantly stands out, complementing the limited number of both. Each level also has four variations depending on the time of year, which is an appreciated extra touch. 
I really did get lost in this world each time I played, and the music was a major reason for that. Every track has the feeling of a classic Japanese styling, offering low-key harvest melodies or bombastic battle themes. I thoroughly enjoyed each song and was surprised to encounter so much voice acting. It's not constant, but the places where it does pop up really adds depth to each character and is well performed. In the time since its release, Sakuna of Rice and Ruin has found itself to be something of a sleeper hit, and I can absolutely see why. I never expected to enjoy the farming aspect as much as I did or learn so much about the process of rice farming. It's an incredibly tough job, and the game goes out of its way to emphasize that. But it never forgets to have fun, whether through its lovable cast or tough yet fair battles. The repetition of the seasons may get old for some, but there are so many elements that it does well that I found it hard to complain. It's refreshingly satisfying figuring out the farming techniques without any overt directions, and I can't remember the last time I experienced that. If you have any interest at all, don't miss your chance to check it out. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this review, please consider supporting us on Patreon at patreon.com gvgaming so we can create more videos like this in the future. All of your support truly means the world, so be sure to hit that subscribe button and we'll catch you on Good Vibes Gaming next time. Bye!